In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Today's Gospel reading is unique for a number of reasons. First of all, besides the resurrection, it is the only event, the only miracle that Jesus does that's recorded in all four Gospels. Of all the miracles that Jesus did, besides his resurrection, this is the only one recorded in all four Gospels. And that's of course because when the Gospel writers were talking to everybody to write their accounts, so many people, thousands of people, were impacted by this miracle. There were so many eyewitnesses to this one miracle, so many beneficiaries of this one miracle. Another interesting thing about this is that no one asked Jesus to do this miracle. The gospel says he did this out of his compassion, out of his love for his people. They had come to hear him preach. It was a long day. It was late. They were hungry. They were tired. And in his compassion, he worried about them. For the love of God. And finally, I want to say that this is where a great turn takes place in the scripture. Up until this time, all the miracles that Jesus performed, he performed by himself. He did them himself. He touched people and made the blind see, the deaf hear, the crippled walk by his own touch. This time, he tells the disciples to be part of the miracle. The day, the church, has to do the work. This is where he begins to prepare the church to do his work after he ascends into heaven. He doesn't leave us orphaned. We do the work together for each other. And this is the key for us in this gospel lesson today. So the challenge that the apostles have is okay, you want us to feed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish, how's that going to work? Give me what you have and I'll bless it. Don't worry about how little it is. Don't worry about what's going to happen afterwards. Your faith in me is, bring me what you have to offer. And let me bless it. And see if I will multiply it. And not only does he multiply it enough to feed everybody, but those disciples, he didn't say, I'm going to save a loaf for us, cut into 12. They had 12 baskets left over. For them to eat from. God is the greatest giver. We can't outgive God. So the lesson that we have to learn out of this is that Christ expects the church to do miracles, to help people, to give whatever it is that we have to offer, that He will bless and bless us for offering it. Not to worry about how little it is or worry about where the next thing is going to come from, but to trust in His power to take what we have to give, to sacrifice, to offer, and to bless it for the good intention in His serve. And to know that the greatest giver will give us more in return for what we give. And so what does that mean? Well, if you can sing, then you need to offer your voice to the choir. If you can work with children or you can teach, you need to offer that talent to the church. If 
you have business savvy, you need to offer it to the parish council. If you're good with, with plants and you love to garden, take care of flowers and the lawn, you need to work on the outside of the church. If you have a talent for cooking, and we know you do, and we know you do it well, but it can be another helping hand in the kitchen. Up at the, the picnic grounds. Whatever talent you have, however little you may think it is, the Lord will add it to what is already blessed and create a greater blessing for this church, for this community, for his people. There is something that everyone can do. Maybe you can visit the sick, not now because of the pandemic, but you can call people and say, how are you doing? Lonely people need to know the church hasn't forgotten them. And not just Father Parenti, but perish. Pray with them over the phone, read the scripture to them that they missed today. Tell them how much they're loved and missed and not forgotten. And even if you're too timid to do that, there's one other thing that everyone can do. I'm mindful of a, a woman who was a very talented teacher and musician and baker. And she said as soon as she retires, she's going to give her whole service to the Lord. Unfortunately, by the time she retired, she had inherited her father's arthritis condition. And her hands were like this. She couldn't bake. She couldn't play the piano. She couldn't pick up a book to teach from. You know what she said? There isn't much I can do, but I can pray. And so every day I'm going to take the prayer list of the sick of the parish and the prayer list of the directory of the parish and pray for everybody in the parish. And she started a little society, a little group of, of ladies who did that every day. And people were amazed, people not in the church were amazed that that parish would pray for people, especially people who are forgotten, who are ill, who are homebound. And actually, brought some people into that parish because she was not going to give up working, giving of herself to the church. The Lord blessed her humble sacrifice. And so on this day, unfortunately the weather has to put us from being outside where I would have likened the beautiful grounds to where the Lord would have had 5,000 people. Or here in this beautiful church. And in honor of that miracle that is the only one recorded in all four Gospels, let us renew our faith in the God who has compassion for us. And trust that no matter what we offer Him, He will bless and give us more back than we can ever give Him. Let us commit ourselves to serving him and his people and his church with whatever we can give. But all of us should give something. If that little boy hadn't come with those five loaves and two fishes, that miracle would never have been recorded. Whatever we can give, the Lord can bless and multiply and give us more in return. Put your trust always, your faith always, your love always, in the God who loves us more than we love ourselves. To and beyond glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, to ages of ages. Amen. Christ is in our midst. Amen. Let us say, Lord, for and all our minds.